My top five big takeaways from the NFL weekend, and I will allow Hembo to return for this. Uh, Hembo, I hope you've learned your lesson. I hope you feel su sufficiently chastened, and I hope that you are ready to move on in a better way. Having said that, here are my big five takeaways. Again, normally I will do these on Mondays, but I wasn't here, and it's actually worth doing because sometimes the Monday night game gets in there. Week one is now officially in the books. Here are my top five observations. Number five. Zach Wilson has a chance to be great. I genuinely emerged feeling more good things than bad about the Jets rookie quarterback who was under siege the entire first half of their game against Carolina the other day. The offensive line was should have been ashamed of themselves to allow this rookie to be completely dominated the way that he was. And you know what he did? He hung in there. He still made some good throws. He showed you a lot of toughness. And in the second half, I thought he played really well. I emerged very optimistic about my quarterback, my beloved Zach Wilson. I think he has a chance to be great. Number four. Mac Jones is actually 37 years old. <laughs> I, I do. If you, There is no way in hell that guy is 22. I want to take any of you who've ever been like AAU parents or anything like that. Like when my kid was playing basketball and, you know, you could only be under a certain age, like 10 and under or something. There's always one kid who's like six feet tall and some parent on the other team will always ask to see a birth certificate and will say there's no way in the world that guy is, is really only 10 years old. There's no way Mac Jones is 22 years old. Mac Jones is playing advanced level quarterback in his first NFL game. I, I am so impressed, I don't even know what to say. Now, if you listen to the show, you know that during the season and during the build-up to the draft process, I was singing his praises. I told you, he graduated from Alabama with, with a straight-A average, a 4.0 GPA in two and a half years, and has a master's degree. But it's one thing to be intelligent. It's another thing to just have figured this thing out. He is wise beyond his years, his maturity beyond his years. He didn't want the ball from his first touchdown because he figures, oh, there's going to be a lot more than that. So that's my next observation. Don't believe anything anyone tells you. Mac Jones is actually 37 years old. Number three. Uh, three, the Bears' decision to go with Andy Dalton is even worse than I thought it was, which is to say the Bears were in that game. Andy Dalton is not good. I don't know how many times I need to keep saying this. Andy Dalton has been a below-average NFL quarterback for five years. Justin Fields is your future, and he should be your president. And here's what else I will say. That, as I watch that, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of Mitch Trubisky for this reason. Matt Nagy has this idea. He, he's the one who, I think, believes in the Mahomes model. When Mahomes and that situation and this situation, as I pointed out last week, have nothing to do with each other, he wants to run Kansas City's offense. That's his offense. That's what he wants to run. But that's not the skill set of the players that he's got. So that wasn't Trubisky's skill set. That's why he benched Trubisky for, for uh, Nick Foles the second he could, even though Trubisky's a better player. Trubisky's a better player than Nick Foles. He was the second pick in the draft for a reason. And with a coach who wanted to design an offense that suited him, he might have succeeded. And it, guess what? He still might with a second chance in Buffalo now. In the meantime, you got Justin Fields out there. You want him to hit his back foot and get rid of the ball quickly? That most rookies don't do that, and Andy Dalton's not doing it effectively anyway. And your offense is generally lousy, and the line is terrible. The decision to go with Dalton is worse than I initially thought. Having watched it, I actually emerged more pessimistic than optimistic. And they got to make this change. They're playing Cincinnati. That's Dalton's old team. I don't know. Is this the Andy Dalton Super Bowl? Is that, is that what we're all excited to see here? I, I don't know what. I don't know what. But I have no idea why they're doing that. Greeny's list here with my top five observations. Number two. The Saints are a legitimate threat. And they are genuinely better with Jameis than with Drew Brees. Now calm down. Obviously, I don't mean that in totality. I don't mean that over the course of time. But the Drew Brees that was there last year, it was over. It was done. They outplayed the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in a playoff game at home last year and lost because Breeze threw three interceptions. Breeze had lost his arm strength. It was over for him physically. That's not an insult. He's one of the greatest players that ever lived, one of the greatest quarterbacks that ever lived, and a terrific guy. But the end comes for everyone except Tom Brady. And in the case of Breeze, it was over. 
he was not able to stretch the field. Defenses were able to take advantage of his lack of arm strength. They're not doing that to Jameis. Now, Jameis is going to make mistakes. You are going to have to live with picks. He threw an interception in the end zone. They got called back on a ridiculously bad roughing the passer call. And whatever, that ball was tipped. It doesn't matter. The point I'm going to make is Jameis will make some mistakes along the way because players who are as turnover prone as he is never get rid of it entirely. But they're going to be good. That defense is really good. The weapons are good. The coaching is elite. And Jameis is going to play well. The Saints are a legit threat. And that brings us to this. Number one. My number one observation. And I said it in our first hour. If you had to pick an MVP of the league after one game, it's Dak Prescott. I know they lost. And Graziano obliterated me or got all upset on TV this morning that my MVP is from in a losing effort. But I tell you what. You're not going to get a whole lot of better performances this entire year than the one Dallas gave you and their quarterback gave you Thursday night on the road. They played Tampa a hell of a lot tougher than most people are going to play them all year long. And when you factor in Prescott coming off the injury and everything else and not being able to throw it in the preseason and playing without the offensive line, you already know what happened. If I had to pick an MVP of the league after one week of the season, my vote would be for Rain Dakota Prescott. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.